Hi, welcome to the ninth chapter of class 7 geography. Chapter 9 Life in the Temperate Grasslands. What is a grassland? A large open area of country covered with grass, especially one used for grazing. Animals can graze on it. And now you have to remember this grasslands are only found in temperate region and tropical regions. Let me show you where these regions are. There it is. But for this chapter, we are only going to focus on temperate region. The temperate grasslands of North America are known as the prairies. I'll show this to you in a map. This portion of North America has grasslands, which is called prairies. It is a region of flat, gently sloping hilly land. If you look at the physical feature of North America, on the west they have rocky mountains. In northeast they have great lakes. On the complete east they have Appalachian mountains. It's right in the middle they have grassland called prairies. This place is also a lowland. And since it's a lowland, you will find plenty of tributaries of the river Mississippi draining here. Now this grassland goes all the way to Canada in north. Hence we can say the grassland in North America is called prairies and it is right in the middle of the continent and stretches up till Canada in north. Now let's read about the climate of this place. Since this grassland is located at the middle of the continent, by this we can say that it's in the heart of the continent. So the climate is of continental type with extreme temperatures. So always remember this. The places which are near to the coastline will never see any seasonal rhythm of the weather. So they will constantly have humidity and sunshine and rainfall. But it is the interior of the continent or the landmass which will have an extreme temperature. Which means they will have all sorts of seasons that are available. Summer, winter, rainy, everything. So in the interior there will be a seasonal rhythm of the temperature. And then the annual rainfall in this place is also very moderate. Which means not too high, not too less. Which is ideal for the growth of grass. That's why this place has good amount of grass and it's called grassland. Due to the absence of the north-south barrier, a local wind, Chinook, blows here. So earlier we read about the physical feature of North America. There we clearly saw that on the west they have a rocky mountain, on the east they have Appalachian mountain. So there is nothing on the north and south. So when there is no natural barrier, wind is bound to blow freely. And with all of this element, this place is an ideal for growing grass. And hence, it's a grassland. Now let's read about the flora and fauna of this place. Since it's a grassland, there will be no trees over there. So prairies are practically treeless place. But water is available, so you will have some sort of trees like willows, alders and poplars. They are not as big as a banyan tree or other sort of trees which are, which are heavily spread out. These are very thin, their bark and stem is very thin. And here the rainfall is also very moderate, which is around 50 cm. So the soil is very fertile. If the soil is fertile, then it is also suitable for farming. And this place also has a lot of farms where major crops like maize, potatoes, soybean, cotton and alfalfa are grown since it has a lot of grasses. So it is suitable for cattle rearing and grazing. And you must have seen in the movies where in America how some people are like cowboys and they have huge ranches where they have bisons, American buffalo and other animals are also found like rabbits, coyotes, gophers and prairie dog. So this was all about the flora and fauna of this place. Now let's read about the people of this region. So the people of this region are very hardworking. Since America and Canada is a developed nation, so they have successfully harnessed technology to utilize their natural resources. And since it's a grassland and they have huge number of farms, therefore scientific methods of cultivation, that is the use of tractors, harvesters, have made America a surplus food producer. And the other name given to this grassland prairies is called granaries of the world. So basically they have huge farms, so grains are produced over there. So no wonder it's a granary of the world. And it has a huge surplus production of wheat. So another major industry apart from agriculture is dairy farming. So the dairy farming extends from the Great Lakes, that is at the northeast, to the Atlantic coast, that is deep in the east side. Since dairy farming is an extensive agriculture here, so they have a lot of food processing industries as well. That's why you'll see they have tons of milk products, far more than what we see in our supermarkets. And this central region also has a large mineral deposits, particularly coal and iron. Therefore, uh, these are very crucial and important natural resources. Hence, a good network of roads, railways and canals has to be there because these are required to support industrialization. And that is what is happening in America right now. So this was the people and the business side of this place. And also a very important topic in order to understand what is the reason behind the development of this nation. Now we'll read about another type of grassland called the Welds. This is a temperate grassland found in South Africa, just below the Tropic of Capricorn. I'll just show it to you in a map. Now remember, anything below the Tropic of Capricorn is a temperate zone in Southern Hemisphere. And in the Northern Hemisphere, anything above Tropic of Cancer is a temperate zone. 
So this region has a lot of plateaus ranging from 600 meter to 1100 meters. So on the eastern side, it has a barrier called the Drakensberg mountain and on the western side, you have the Kalahari Desert. And the tributaries of the rivers Orange and Limpopo drain in this region. So now let's get to know the climate of this region. So it has a very mild climate because it is next to the Indian Ocean. So winters are cold and dry just like India. And their temperature varies from 5 degree to 10 degree Celsius. And July is the coldest month. Summers are short and warm. And the reason being it's in the temperate zone and the sun rays doesn't fall directly on the surface. Had it been in the equator just like the other African nations, it would have been super hot. I mean, just look at the temperature of Johannesburg in summer. It's just 20 degrees Celsius. It's an awesome place to go on a holiday. Again, they receive rainfall in the month of November and February. And this is because of the warm ocean currents that washes the shores of the welts. And this place also has the chances of having a drought. So this was all about the climate of the welts. Now let's read about the flora and fauna of this place. The vegetation cover is sparse, meaning thin and scattered. Since it's a grassland, grasses will dominate the landscape. Now this is amazing. Red grass grows in this welts. And in the region of high welts, which is in the northeastern side, you have Acacia and Marula. And they look something like this. And the kind of animals that are found in this place is lion, leopards, cheetah and kudu. And now let's get to know the people who live in this region of welts. So this place is well known for cattle rearing and mining. Since it's a grassland, cattle rearing is common and mining. We just heard about the city Johannesburg, remember? And that place is world famous for gold and diamond mining. The soils of this region are not very fertile. Again, we just read in the previous topic, the vegetation cover is sparse. So because of this unfertility of land, the grasses are discontinuous, meaning you'll see bare land in between the grassland. And whatever the amount of land which is fertile, crops are grown on it. So the main crops that are grown are maize, wheat, barley, oats and potato. Cash crops like tobacco, sugarcane and cotton are also grown. And a very common occupation for the people of this place is sheep rearing. And it's mainly for wool and wool industry is very famous in this place. Merino sheep is a popular species and their wool is very warm. So after sheep rearing, dairy farming is the next important occupation. Dairy products like butter, cheese are produced for both domestic as well as outside country. Again, this place is rich in the reserve of minerals like coal and iron, which is important for the development of iron and steel industry. And because of mining, gold and diamond are very famous and it's also a major occupation of people. See. Johannesburg is known for being the gold capital of the world. Kimberley is famous for its diamond mines. And because of this natural resource, British got interested in it and they made South Africa one of their British colony. And where there is rich mineral, that place is bound to have a well-developed network of transport. And with this, we have come to an end of this chapter. I hope you found this chapter informative and watch this video a couple of times and you will not forget about two of famous grasslands in the temperate region. If you enjoy these videos and see a purpose behind watching them, please like the video and comment down below. Until then, catch you guys later and talk to you guys on the next one. Peace.